Hi everyone, in this lecture I'm going to continue the 11th chapter which is about input, output and exception handling in Java. So we start this lecture by an example of text input and output. Uh, if you remember the scanner class had many uh, methods. The next method in this class reads a string that is delimited by white space. So let's assume that we are processing a file in a program and we write you know the following while loop in this program. The input I mean the condition of this while loop is this int in dot has next. As I said before the has next method returns either a true or a false and basically it means that continue doing uh, the block of while loop until you have reached to the end of the file. So what does it say? It says, uh, in the first line it says, create an string input and set it equal to in.next. So basically we parse and read the first, uh, the next uh, string that is delimited by white space. And then in the next line we say, simply print it on the, uh, screen. So if the input is Mary had a little lamb, the loop prints out the following output. Mary had a little lamb and each word is in, is in a different uh, line, is in, in, is in a separate line because we use println. println adds a new line after each uh, you know, input. So basically the next method returns any sequence of characters that is not white space. Uh, when we say white space, we mean spaces, tab characters, and the new line characters, the separate lines. So the following strings are considered word, uh, considered words by the next method, snow.1729 and C++. These are three different words that are separated that are separated with uh, a white space. So let's see more details about the next uh, method. When next is called, input characters that are white space are consumed and removed from the input, so they are ignored, and they don't become part of the word that uh, the next will return will return. And the first character that is not white space becomes the first character of the word that next returns. So more characters are added to the output until one of these two events happen. The one that happens first obviously will, uh, you know, will stop the operation. Either another white space character occurs or the end of the input file has been reached. If the end of input file is reached before even one character is added to the word, then an exception will happen uh, and no such element exception occurs. We will see uh, the examples of exceptions and many uh, other, uh, you know, uh, points about exceptions in Java in the next lecture. So let's see a more complicated example of using next method. Let's assume that you want to read only words and discard anything that isn't a letter. So if it's number, if it's punctuations, if it's any other characters, but letters, it has to be ignored. It has, it has to be discarded by the next method. If you want to do that, you have to call the use delimiter before calling the next method of scanner class. Here is how we use uh, the use the limiter method of scanner class. We simply say in dot use the limiter, and since in this case we want everything, uh, we want to discard everything but letters. We say the delimiters are everything but this sign this sign is except everything except 
the letters A to Z, the capital form of letters, and alph alphabetical letters, and the lowercase form of alphabetical letters. So anything except these uh, 52 different characters has to be ignored. So we add a plus at the end, which means that uh, the occur once or more than, I mean, the occurrence of these letters uh, has to be discarded. And the plus means one or more times. It means that if you have one or more times of occurrence of these characters, which means all characters, but uh, the 52 letters, they all has to be ignored and they all has to be considered as a delimiter and we have to ignore them so that the next method only reads words that contains letters so the word separator becomes any character that isn't a letter and uh, obviously punctuations and numbers are not included in the word returned by the next method another important and interesting application of next method is to read one character at a time if you want to do this you have to set the delimiter pattern to the empty string so when you call in dot use delimiter use a empty string as its input parameter in this case uh, when you call next it returns a string consisting of only one single character so it reads characters uh, one character at a time to process the characters uh, you need to have a while loop like this Basically, this while loop continues until you reach a, you reach to the end of the file because the condition of the while loop is in that has next. Inside the while loop, you first uh, uh, assign, assign uh, the next character to a, a type a variable of type character called ch. So uh, char ch is equal to in that next dot char at zero when you when you call in dot next it returns a string with only one character and when you call dot char at zero for that string it returns the one and only character that construct the string so you simply have the character uh, in the char ch variable after the first line so in the second line and in the following lines you can do whatever you want to do with uh, ch for example you want to print it out or you want to uh, put it in another outer stream uh, or you want to do whatever uh, you are asked to do with it so here in this slide we see uh, a number of methods uh, in the class character uh, which are very helpful for classifying characters. Uh, here are some examples of these methods. One is is digit. Is digit is digit is a method that basically gets a character as its input parameter and returns either true or false. It returns true if the character the input parameter is a digit and it's false. It returns false otherwise. Is letter is another method which basically returns true only if we have a letter as an input parameter, either the capital form or the lowercase form. Is uppercase only returns true if the input parameter is a capital letter. Is lowercase only returns true if the input parameter is a lowercase. And is white space returns true only if the input parameter is you know a space or a new line or a tab next we take a look at uh, how we can use the scanner methods to read a line so there's a method called next line that you can call for a scanner that reads a line of input and consumes the new line character at the end of that line so when you write a uh, string line is equal to in dot next line 
the next line method reads the whole line and then co consumes uh, the new line character and returns the line uh, so that you know the line that is assigned to the output of the next line method uh, gets the whole string that exists on that line uh, and then there's a method called has next line that basically returns false if there are no more input lines and if there is uh, another input line it returns true uh, so it is useful for the conditions of a while loop that you want to uh, write for uh, processing a file with multiple lines and then uh, the example that we will take a look at uh, carefully in the next slides is the, the you know is the following uh, uh, scenario you want to process a file with population data from the CIA factbook uh, with lines like this in which in each line we have one uh, country with its uh, corresponding population for example China space the population of China India space the population of India United States space the population of uh, United States and then we have many other lines and then we have the end of the file so let's see how we can uh, read the names of the country and you know the population in each line of the file that we saw uh, in the previous slide basically if you want to read the whole file you have to read uh, each line at a time using uh, this a while loop the condition of the while loop is in that has next line which basically checks whether we have reached the end of the file or there exists another line and in inside this while loop we first uh, create a string line and set it equal to the output of the next line basically next line returns uh, the line that exists uh, on the file and it consumes uh, the new line character that is at the end of that line and then after that we try to process the line to find out the name of the country and the con uh, and the you know and the population of the country so uh, in order to find out the name and the population we need to know where exactly the name ends and the population starts so we use the uh, you know the, the methods is digit and is white space met of uh, you know the class character that we have seen before to find out where exactly name ends and the number starts on which character we end uh, we we are done with the, the name of the country and we start the population of the country how can we figure it out using the following while, while loop you need a counter i which uh, you know uh, which uh, stores the index of the character in the line and in a while loop we say while the character is not a digit so the, the negation of character that is digit means the character is not a digit which character the character as at, 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 at index i so not character that is digit line the char at i which means the ith character of the line while that character is not a digit increment the counter so it continue it continues incrementing the counter until it reaches to the first character of uh, the population in that point on that in, in, in this point when it reaches to i that is the beginning of the population we stop and then we can call the substring uh, method of uh, string class to get the country name by calling as you see line that substring uh, zero and i which means uh, extract the substring is starting from uh, character zero and ends at 
character i. And then uh, the population would be line that substring i, which basically uh, extracts the population and put it in a string population. Now, strings country name and a strings population, they both contain the appropriate values. Country name contains the country name and the population contains uh, the string of uh, the population number. In the next step, we try to trim uh, the strings that we extracted from in the previous slide and uh, make the strings uh, cleaner and remove the spaces if the, there is one. Uh, basically, the uh, trim uh, method can be called for any string like country name uh, that we saw in the previous slide and uh, it basically removes the spaces at the beginning and end of a string uh, so if United States has a space uh, in the last character it basically uh, by calling the trim you can basically remove that space so as you saw in the previous slide uh, the final result wasn't uh, very satisfying because we found, uh, you know, we constructed a, a string for country name, but we needed to trim it. Uh, and then we constructed a string for population, but population is a number, not a string. So uh, we prefer to have um, the population in the form of its numerical value, for example, in a long integer, but, you know, uh, the, the code that we wrote in the previous slides couldn't uh, give us uh, the numerical value of population and if you want to construct a population uh, value numerical value yourself it's a messy algorithm a messy procedure to uh, convert a string to its equivalent number so here in this slide we show you how to use a scanner object to uh, do these uh, tough jobs. First, uh, we need to know that uh, the scanner object can also read the characters from a string. Previously, we have seen that a scanner can read uh, an input file, but it can also read uh, a string. For example, scanner line scanner is a variable that can be set equal to new scanner line. Line is a is a, is, the, is the input parameter of the constructor of a scanner. If you remember, line was a string, but it becomes the input parameter for the constructor of a new scanner. And then we can use the line scanner like any other scanner objects to read words and numbers. So country name is a word, population is a number. First we uh, define a string like uh, country name and we set it equal to line scanner dot next. Then in this while loop, we check whether the country name has some uh, spaces in it. What, I, what do I mean? For example, the United States has one space. Or, you know, there are many country names that contain space. So when you, if you only call dot .next, it only reads the first part of the country name. For example, if the name is United States, it only reads United. In this while loop, we take care of the other parts of the country name, like states in the United States. So we say as long as there is no number, as long as the line scanner that has next integer returns false, because there is a negation sign here, do the following. Uh, simply concatenate the country name with the next string that line scanner dot next returns and when you are concatenating them 
you need to add a space between them. So uh, in the case of United States, uh, we have only one iteration of this while loop because after that we reach to the population of United States. But in, this, in that single iteration, we concatenate United to the States word. So it becomes United States. The country name becomes complete. After that, when you see the population of the country, you simply say int population value is equal to line scanner dot next int. If you remember, next int is a method in the scanner class which basically parses uh, the string and returns the numerical value in this case the integer that represents the value of the population for the country that exists in the file. So in this slide, I'm going to show you how to convert strings to number using other methods of other classes like integer class or double class. If a string contains the digits of a number, you can use uh, either integer.parse int or uh, double.parse double to convert the string to the numerical value that that string represents. For example, if the string contains uh, 30382464646 and you use the integer parse in the, in the following way by writing that int population value is equal to integer dot parse int population, basically the population value would be an integer uh, containing the number 303 uh, 303 million and if you have a string with some fractional point like 3.95 which has a fractional part you can use double dot uh, parse double so it's another method in the uh, class double which basically uh, parses the string and create a double that is uh, representing the equivalent value of that string. So if you call double the parse double for that input for 3.95, re it returns uh, the double value of this string, which is 3.95, and set it equal to uh, the variable price we type double. And then it's important to know that the string must not contain spaces or other non-digit uh, characters. So you can use trim before passing the string to parse int. So for example, if you want to convert the population to its equivalent uh, integer value, you can say population.trim uh, first, and this way it removes the spaces from uh, the beginning and the end and then you pass it to parse int so that you can convert the string into a uh, value in the int into an integer value of the population and then set it equal to the int population value it's important to avoid errors when reading uh, uh, numbers otherwise you will see uh, that an exception is thrown so uh, you know, if the input is not a properly formatted number, when calling next int or next double method, you have a exception. You will have an exception. Basically, uh, let's assume that the input is space two one st space c n t u r y, and if this is the input, uh, then uh, you know the white space is consumed and the word. 21st is read, but 21st is not a properly formatted number, uh, which causes an input mismatch exception in the next int method. And basically, if there's no input at all, uh, and you call next int or next double, again, you get no such element exception. So either you have a mismatched or misformatted number or you have a you have no number at all uh, you will get an exception no such element exception will occur 
In order to avoid such exceptions, you need to use uh, the method has next int. The method has next int is provided in scanner class, which basically returns true if there is an integer. If there is no integer, you have to first trim the string or uh, you can simply end the uh, process uh, so that you don't get any exceptions. So here I'm going to show you a scenario in which we encounter uh, some problems while using a next, a next int, next double, and next line, or uh, you know, uh, other uh, similar methods of a scanner class. Uh, it's important to know that next int, next double, and next method do not consume the white space that follows the number or word. So this can be problematic if you alternatively call next int, next double, next and next line. So I'm going to show you a scenario in which we uh, will face a problem Let's assume that you have a file containing the country names and uh, populations in the following format. Uh, in the first line, we have uh, the name of the first country like China, then the population of the first country, followed by a new line. And then we have another new line with name of the, th the second country, in this case, India, then the population of India. Uh, name of the third country and population of the third the, the third country. All of these uh, the, you know strings are separated by a new line. Let's see how we can uh, read and scan uh, this input file. So let's assume that the file is uh, scanned using the following while loop. While uh, in that has next line, do the following. Construct a string for country name, which is in that next line, and then the population, which is in that next int, and then after that, simply process the country name and population. You can do whatever you want to do with that string and that integer containing country name and population, respectively. So in this slide, I'm going to show you that the code that we saw in the previous slide doesn't work. That while loop doesn't work. Uh, let's assume that the initial input is this. China backslash n, the population of China backslash n, India backslash n, so on and so forth. Input after first call to the next line would be what? We read the China and we consume uh, the backslash n because we call next line and whatever we so 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 the the rest of the input file would be the population of China followed by a backslash n by a new line followed by India followed by new line. Now, after you call next int, we simply read the population of China, which means this part of the uh, input uh, or the file input will be consumed but we are not uh, removing backslash n by calling next int the next int doesn't remove backslash n next line removes backslash n but next int doesn't consume backslash n so after calling next int we would have backslash n india backslash n now if you call uh, next uh, line after this, the second call to next line will only read an empty string because it consider that only backslash n as a new string. And you know, basically, that's a problem because the next uh, line should replay should uh, return India, but it only consumes one uh, new line character. The problem was that next int didn't consume backslash n, so the next line uh, method following that next int uh, method call didn't do its job properly. The remedy is that we need to add 
uh, another call to next line after reading the population value so that we can get rid of that new line before India, right? So immediately after next line, we have to call, I'm sorry, immediately after the after next int method call, we have to call next line to get rid of the extra new line, right? So that we can consume the new line so that in the next iteration of the while loop, we read the country name in the correct manner. If you remember in the previous lecture, I uh, talked about uh, the three uh, you know, uh, methods that we use for uh, uh, writing the output or uh, generating uh, for generating the output and printing some message on the screen. One was print, print ln and print f. Uh, print f means print uh, the message or print the uh, a string that you want to put on the out on the screen uh, in a formatted way. So there are a lot of options for printf method for formatting uh, the output. Uh, there are some flags like dash, uh, zero, plus, uh, parentheses, comma, and this character. Uh, dash means left alignment. For example, uh, 1.23 followed by a space. Zero means uh, show leading zeros, like uh, uh, when you have two zeros at the beginning of a number, so you want leading zeros for some reason. Plus uh, shows a plus sign for positive numbers, obviously, uh, the minus sign uh, would be always for negative numbers, but the plus sign for positive numbers is only uh, shown when you have a plus flag. If you have parentheses uh, or open parentheses flag, then it encloses negative numbers in parentheses. And uh, if you have comma, it shows decimal separators. So for example, if you have a large integer like 12,300, it separates the digits uh, in a group of three so that it is easier to read. Uh, and uh, this sign, this symbol, uh, converts letters to uppercase. So if you have uh, 1.23e, plus one, which is the scientific form of showing a number, it converts uh, lowercase e to uppercase e. So let's assume that you want to print a table of items and prices using printf method, uh, which uh, each is stored in an array. So uh, the item string line up to the left and the numbers line up to the right. So let's see how we can uh, format the output using printf. In this example, in order to specify the left alignment, we need a flag, uh, which is a uh, hyphen uh, before the field width. So in this example, we are going to print out the item followed by the price in the same line. So we need two field specifiers in the first input parameter of the printf. Our printf has three parameters. The first one is basically specifying the format in which the output should be printed out. Uh, the second one shows the value that should be replaced by the uh, first uh, field specifier. So the first field specifier is percent minus 10 s this will be replaced by item i plus hyphen plus uh, column sorry and the second uh, field specifier which again starts with a percent sign percent 10.2 f will be replaced by price i which is the price of the item that uh, was uh, printed out before 
this uh, price. So there are two format specifiers. There are two, you can either call it field specifier or format specifiers. Uh, percent minus 10s is the first one. The second one is 10.2f. What is uh, percent minus 10s? The, the hyphen, the minus sign, is to mention that we have a left justified string. The, word, the, the number 10 specifies that that a string uh, with a is padded with the spaces so that it becomes 10 characters wide. How do we know that we have a string? Because we use the word, the letter S. S stands for string. Then the other format specifier is percent 10.2f. What does 10 mean? The 10 means that the field uh, is 10 characters wide. Uh, when we uh, write f, f means we have a, a floating point, we have a, a float number and you have, a f, uh, you have uh, two digits at the floating part and in the, uh, and the, you know, the, the, the length of the whole uh, number should be at most 10 characters. So all the spaces will appear to the left of the value. Uh, to the left of that number because uh, we didn't use hyphens so it should be right aligned. Here is the output. For example, clams is the uh, item name and 17.29 is the uh, price of that item. So we first you uh, it first prints out clams followed by a column uh, which is left aligned and then after the tenth space of uh, clams we have another 10 characters uh, which specify the, 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 the number 17.29, but it is uh, obviously padded with enough spaces so that we can create a 10 character long uh, price. And obviously it's right hand, uh, right alignment, uh, right aligned because we didn't use a hyphen like what we did for uh, item. So this is the uh, final result. We have a left justified string followed by uh, a right justified uh, floating number, float number, which has two digits after decimal point. Why two digits? Because of this two that you mentioned in the, uh, you know, format specifier of uh, the price. So let's take a look at the structure of a format specifier. The first character of a format specifier must be the percent sign. Next uh, are optional flags that we saw in the previous slides. There was a table showing all the flags that modify the format such as hyphen to indicate the left alignment. Then we have uh, the field width that shows how long uh, the, 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 you know, the field must be. The total number of characters in the field, including the spaces used for padding, uh, followed by an optional uh, precision for floating point numbers only. And then uh, the format specifier ends with the format type, such as F for uh, floating point values, or S for strings, or D for decimal values. Uh, in this table, you can see different uh, format types. 